let's do some experiments with uh, this plate. And uh, I've got these tops. I got these tops at the gift store at a museum of science. And uh, I think they're wonderful. I noticed that when I spun them, it, to my eye, I got an image that looks like this. It looks kind of like a blurry, indistinct combination of all the colors. And I then recorded that video. I recorded that top with my video camera on my phone. And I got this kind of effect. It looks like it's not even moving. I mean, it's moving, but it, it doesn't look like the top on top is moving sometimes. And that comes down to the difference between how video cameras create images and how our eye creates images. It's just different. A uh, video camera creates very sharp pictures, often, if there's enough light it can create a sharp image, and then it displays them in rapid, rapid succession in front of our eye so that it seems like images that are static are moving. And our eye doesn't work that way. We basically take big chunks of information at a time, little details that we're noticing, and then our brain puts together an image. So we don't really get sharp images every time we look at something. We get whatever's recently moved, our eye updates. So it's just fun to play with a video camera and these tops because you can see different effects if you, you know, have the right number of shutter speeds and light to shine on the top so that you don't, you know, get too dark an image. You can just see an infinite number of patterns evincing on these tops. And I, I put a little dot with a Sharpie, a marker, on this top before I spun it this time. So you can kind of see every time it's being captured, it's just coming right back around and sometimes it's 180 degrees from itself. And then it starts to rotate and all depending on the nature of the recording of the video. And here it is side by side. These are the exact same spin, pretty much. Um, the only difference is one of them has the, the little black marks. So you can kind of track what's really happening. We can't really perceive much motion on this pattern since it's so symmetrical. But I love that little ratcheting effect that happens here. I, I don't understand what's happening here. This is sped up a little bit, now it's regular speed. But um, it's just fun on video to watch this stuff. I, our eye, I'll take it back. Our eye can perceive this in real life, but it needs the aid of a like a strobe light or an LED because LEDs often will flash on and off quickly and they can generate this effect. If you have a strong like countertop light, maybe under the counter light, those are LEDs sometimes, try, try doing this experiment. Try spinning a top under that light. Maybe try flipping these quarters like I'm doing here. It looks, I know, almost like that quarter isn't even really moving. But really it's just, it's being captured so sharply every time and it's coming around almost at the same point every time it, the camera takes another frame, it almost looks like it's not moving in a traditional fashion that we would expect from our world with our physics. Here's some more quarter spinning. I'm gonna get some more footage of this later with uh, from the side. I'm so curious, oh, that was cool. So even though this, this, they did hit here, boom, it's almost like they didn't even wanna have anything to do with each other. Just like, whoa, nope, don't want to be near that quarter. Getting away before I even touch it. I love these. Uh, this is with a strong side light, so cool. Uh, here's what happens when you spin a top on its side. I know that's, you know, it's the top. Why wouldn't you spin it on its top? But you spin it on its side, you get this cool effect, especially when you look at it on video. It almost looks like it's just kind of, it's a piston moving in and out, but it's, it's not. It's just. It's rapidly rotating and the camera keeps catching it at intervals that create visual interest for humans. So let's take it down to like, this is super slow motion. It's almost like it's just standing in one place and oscillating between two states. Do I wanna be over here? Do I wanna be over here? I don't know. Maybe I'll try over here. Ooh yeah, over here's pretty good. I like the natural patterns that form by spinning these tops on this plate because the plate has rounded edges and it kind of forces, there's kind of a center to it almost. It doesn't really have a well at the middle, but it definitely is helping the tops find their center. Moving on. I got these at the gift shop as well. More stuff. Uh, these are little cubes. Obviously here's some information on them. And I figured they would be great for me doing some time-lapse or stop motion animation. 
And by the way, what you're about to see right here, I'm going to switch into time lapse mode. You'll see a little icon at the bottom right with a little green clock. That means this is time lapse footage. I recorded that with a time lapse dedicated app. I put a pinhole on the lens here. It's a 0.5 millimeter pinhole, which is letting me focus closer on these blocks and see more of the blocks in the background also in focus. So that was fun. I was mostly testing how close could I get with a 0.5 millimeter pinhole, which is bigger than some of the ones I've used recently to get sharp images. So this was a useful test, and I figured I'd kind of arrange a spectrum of nice colors so that even if in a, when I ended up watching this video that I was making, at least it would be colorful. Even if there was just a bunch of visual gibberish, it'd be fun to see. Oh, so now we're switching into animation mode. And that's uh, Stop Motion Pro. You see that little icon at the bottom? That's a little bouncing ball. That's animation. So now we're just kind of stop motioning. This is what I wanted to do with these blocks. Just kind of experiment. How close could I get with having them be in focus? Rotating in front of a window gives you different light. Um, so when I rotated this, I'm going to rewind it. I picked the yellow square as kind of the centering point for this rotation. That helped me animate because then I had a reasonable momentum I could work with. You know, I figured if it's rotating around a single axis, I know how to animate that. I can give it inertia. Now I got this little crystal ball and then they all do their little thing and it's over. That was it.